Bestbookbits.com presents 50 Words to Your Dreams, Chapter 48, Money. Do you want to know how to manifest your dreams? Do you want to know the simple, straightforward, no bullshit path to take your dream out of your head into reality? This 50 chapter video series titled 50 Words to Your Dreams has the answers. Researched for over 10 years and compiled into video written in audio format for easy consumption, this series will empower you with the know-how and tools you need to manifest your dreams into reality. Created by myself, Michael George Knight, the creator of the YouTube channel Best Book Bits and the website bestbookbits.com, this series is a wealth of knowledge condensed down into 50 bite-sized pieces. So without further ado, I bring you 50 words to your dreams, chapter 48, money. Money. The one word in which we work most of our lives for and the one word we study the least. We humans live on an abundant planet that provides everything we need to flourish and thrive with one little twist. It's currently an economic planet. We use money as a medium to trade our time, energy for goods and services to live our life. Regardless of what country you live in or the name you call money, be it dollars, pound, euro, yen or cryptocurrency, we spend most of our waking life working for it, thinking about it and spending it and wishing we had more of it. Money is a major subject and plays a huge part in our lives. It should be a priority study for anyone who wishes to have control over money instead of money having control over you. There are many great books and teachers out there with different philosophies and practical ways to earn money, keep money, and multiply money. Money isn't everything. If your dreaming life is purely based on generating money and having a certain amount of money, then money is the yardstick you use to measure yourself with. If your dream is not money related, but instead money is a bright product of goal achievement, then money is a secondary outcome of your grand dream. The numbers in your bank account don't always reflect success internally or externally in someone's life. Remember, everyone has a different idea and scorecard on what success means to them. In life, there are people with lots of money who are failures, and there are people with very little money who are successful in their own right. Money is the dominant tool people use to measure success in the money-obsessive culture we currently find ourselves in. Money isn't everything in life. You can't buy family, true friendship, peace of mind, health, dreams, fulfillment, and meaning. Yes, with more money, you can buy materialistic things, and you can buy a level of freedom and time. We all want more money in our life, as with more money, we have more freedom, choices, and opportunities to live the life we desire to live. But please don't get confused and push your happiness in your wallet, waiting for your wallet to fatten before you feel happiness. Money can give you short-term high, but not lasting fulfillment and happiness. How to keep track of your money. To keep your finances on track, you have to keep it on the rails. Be in control of your money. Don't let money control you. Remember, money doesn't spend itself. You earn it and you spend it. Ask most people what they did with all their money they have earned over the years and you will draw blank stares and get vague answers like house, bills, food, clothes, kids, holiday, cars and fun. But if you asked how much you have spent on each category, chances are they wouldn't be able to give you an exact figure. People that don't keep track of money are generally sidetracked and headed off track when it comes to money. What if you had detailed records of your last five years of economic household income and expenses? What insights would this give you? What would it show? Would it show economic growth in income and balance sheet? Would it show your spending habits and give you a clear picture of your economic philosophy? Yes, yes, and yes. Why do businesses have profit and loss statements and you individually or as a family don't? If you don't know you have a problem, you will never find a solution. If you have money problems, I suggest you take the time to start tracking your economic activity, your income, and your outgo. I suggest once a month on the first of every month you take 30 minutes out of your life to invest in your financial future. Bring up your online banking accounts and using Microsoft Excel, create a spreadsheet called Wealth Management. Go over your previous month and write out all your income and expenses into a spreadsheet under categories like home loan, food, bills, clothes, holiday, going out, kids, pets, cars, etc. Once you have tabulated every item, use Excel to sort and create your own personalized income and expense monthly report. This will show you the facts, the facts of what you earned and what you spent. Repeat this process for three months and you will have a report of your quarterly individual or household income and expenses. Do this for a year and you will not only have your own yearly economic report, but you will learn more about your economic philosophy than you would reading books. It's good to study, but it's better to study yourself. Get on track with money by tracking. What to do with money? What to do with your money all comes down to your age, experience, background, and philosophy, needs, dreams, commitments, lifestyle, goals, and plan. The six-year-old person and the 20-year-old kid will do different things with money due to the above reasons. 
Anyone can give you money advice on what you should do with your hard-earned income, but only you can decide what to do with your money. Everyone has different tendency with monies. Some people are shopaholics. Some people are tight and save for a rainy day. Some people budget every dollar, and some live their life on credit card, always spending their tomorrows today. However you are wide, every person has a unique relationship with money. Due to age, experience, upbringing, family, education, society, friends, country, and a hundred of other things that form their money philosophy. If what you are doing is currently working for you, continue that. But if you are broke, chances are you need to change your money philosophy and learn from the experts. The best authors and books to study money. I'm no expert in regard to money, but I do know the experts to study. Being the founder of one of the largest free book summary websites, I have summarized dozens of great books on the subject of money. I have distilled the best book bits from the best money books and have them available in written, video, and audio format through the click of a button. Check out the website bestbookbits.com to find hundreds of book summaries for you to get educated. My top dozen books on money I've done summaries on are the following. Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and The Cashflow Quadrant. Grant Cardone, The Millionaire Booklet. George Samuel Clayson, The Richest Man in Babylon. Tony Robbins, Ma Money Master, The Game, and Unshakable. Scott Papp, The Barefoot Investor. Thomas Stanley, The Millionaire Next Door. David Batch, The Automatic Millionaire. T. Harvek, Secrets of the Million Man Mind. Ramit Sethi, I Will Teach You to Be Rich. Joan Hansen, Good Debt, Bad Debt. DJ DeMarco, The Millionaire Fastlane, and Jen Cicero, You Are a Badass at Making Money. Check out those books and educate yourself on money. Quotes on money. A job stands for just over broke. Nobody ever makes money at a job. Nobody ever gets ahead at a job. You keep your nose just above the borderline and you hope there are no storms. A man is paid not merely for what which he knows, but more practically for what he does with what he knows or that which he can get others to do. A part of all you earn is yours to keep. It should be no less than a tenth no matter how little you earn. It can be as much more as you can afford. Pay yourself first. After you become a millionaire, you can give all your money away because what's important is not the million dollars. What's important is the person you have become in the process of becoming a millionaire. Always remember, money is a servant. You are the master. An empty bank account is a sign of an ineffective past effort. It is a sign of missed opportunity it is a sign of too much procrastination or laziness. Asked, who is the rich man? Epictetus replied, he who is content. Becoming wealthy involves a set of habits and ways of doing things, some of which seem of minor importance or common sense, although many of us don't do them. Begin by believing that you deserve wealth. Being rich is having money. Being wealthy is having time. Broke is a situation you find yourself in because you are either under-earning or overspending. Broke is the state of your account. Poor is the state of your mind. Busyness, it is quite simple. It is other people's money. Compounding is mankind's greatest invention because it allows for the reliable systematic accumulation of wealth. Do not save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after saving. Don't buy that second car until you brought that second house. It's not cars that make you rich, it's houses. Don't spend major money on minor things, and conversely, don't spend minor money on major things. Some people spend a fortune on food for their bodies and very little food for their minds. If you spend more on candy than on inspirational books and tapes, that will be foolish, right? Earned income is money you work for and passive and portfolio income is money working for you. Everything that you can make above what you spend is your profit. That's your only true income. Financial independence is the ability to live from the income of your own personal resources. Folks who never do any more than they get paid for, never get paid for any more than they do. Form the habit of systematic saving by putting aside a definite percentage of your income. Money in the bank gives one a very safe foundation of courage when bargaining for the sale of personal services. Without money, one must take what is one is offered and be glad to get it. Get over the idea that there's a scarcity of money because there isn't. He who is richest who is content with the least, for content is the wealth of nature. How do you deserve a fortune? Render fortunes of service. I assure you that the less hung up you are on money, the easier money will come to you. I have about concluded that wealth is a state of mind and that anyone can acquire a wealthy state of mind by thinking rich thoughts. I'm working full-time on my job and part-time on my fortune because profits lead to fortune. I've not found a single investment that gives higher returns than investing in yourself, not one. If you were born poor, it's not your mistake, but if you die poor, 
it's your mistake. If you can actually count your money, then you are not really a rich man. If you can grasp the idea that money is not real, you will grow up rich faster. If you cannot control your emotions, you cannot control your money. If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. If you render no more service than you're paid to render, then it is obvious that you are not entitled to any more pay. This is a fact against which there is no argument. If you want to become rich, you must not make a study of poverty. If you want to feel rich, just count the things you have that money can't buy. If your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep will become your downfall. Income rarely exceeds personal development. It doesn't matter how much you earn, it's just how much you keep. Keep in mind there are only two ways to earn money, people at work or money at work. Keeping money is harder than making money. Learn how money could work for you, unlearn the expectation that you must work for money. Make an investment in a rich person's appetite. Take a rich person out for a meal. There's no telling what you can learn in an hour or two of wealth-oriented talk. Millionaires think differently from the crowd. Money doesn't change men, it unmasks them. Money follows eyeballs. Money is like a jealous lover. Ignore it, and it will leave you for someone that makes it a priority. Money isn't the most important thing in life, but it's reasonably close to oxygen on the gotta have it scale. Money, it turned out, was exactly like sex. You thought of nothing else if you didn't have it, and you thought of other things if you did. Money of itself is nothing but inert matter. It cannot move, think, or talk, but it can hear when a man who desires it calls it to come. Never depend on a single income. Make investment to create a second source. No man becomes rich unless he enriches others. People are not born with a millionaire mind. It's a set of attitudes and knowledge that anyone can adopt and acquire. People who cannot control their cash flow work for those who can. Poor people are focused on spending their money. Rich people are focused on making it, keeping it, and investing it. Rich people, in contrast, create things or systems that can earn money for them independently of their time input. Riches do not respond to wishes. They respond only to definite plans backed by definite desires through constant persistence. Take responsibility for your finances or take orders all your life. You're either a master of money or a slave to it. The best way to help the poor is not to become one of them. The easiest way to make money is to create something of such value that everybody wants and go out and give and create value. The money comes automatically. The key factor that will determine your financial future is not the economy. The key factor is your philosophy. The majority of people devote more time to thinking about money they want or need than they do about creating ways and means of earning that amount through an equivalent of service. The man says, if I had a fortune, I'd take good care of it, but I only have a paycheck and I don't know where it all goes. Wouldn't you love to have him running your company? The most important word in the world of money is cash flow. The second most important word is leverage. The only way to become wealthy is to add more value to other people's lives than anybody's adding. It's the only way. If you're not adding value, you will not sustain the wealth. Your income is in direct proportion to your contribution. The philosophy of the rich versus the poor is this. The rich invest their money and spend what's left. The poor spend their money and invest what's left. The rat race is a trap for people who spend first and then have to work to pay for yesterday's extravagances with tomorrow's earnings. The real measure of your wealth is how much you'd be worth if you lost all your money. The reality is, if you're not very valuable, you don't get much money. There is no easier or surer way of attaining wealth than through the habit of paying yourself first through automatic deductions. There's no financial investment that will ever match investing in yourself. Because if you develop more skills, more ability, more insight, more capacity, that's what is going to really provide economic freedom. To attract money, focus on wealth. It is impossible to bring more money into your life when you focus on the lack of it. To become financially independent, you must turn part of your income into capital. Turn capital into enterprise. Turn enterprise into profit. Turn profit into investment and turn investment into financial independence. Too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. It takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but we get paid for the value, not the time. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Wealth grows wherever men exert energy. Wealth that come quickly goes the same way. When it comes to money, high emotions tend to lower financial intelligence. 
You don't get paid for the hour, you get paid for the value you bring to the hour. And last, you never suffer from a money problem, you always suffer from an idea problem. And that's a wrap on 50 Words to Your Dreams, Chapter 48, Money. Let me know your thoughts in the chapter below. Stay tuned for the last two chapters of the 50 Words to Your Dreams series. If you need some accountability in your life, email me for free coaching sessions at coaching at bestbookbits.com. For hundreds of video, written, and audio book summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. Stay tuned for Chapter 49 in the series, Winner. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something out of this. Go out there and get your money right. Take care. Bye-bye now.